Now we'll start talking about the design and implementation of an operating system. So now, designing an operating system is just like designing uh, you know, any other system. Uh, there is no perfect way of designing a system, and there is no widely accepted uh, method for designing systems. You know, different people have different uh, design uh, philosophies and different approaches. And in fact, in, in this course, we will be studying different approaches and different methods for designing operating systems. And none of them is perfect. Uh, uh, that's why they are interesting, because uh, we would like to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each design method, you know, the advantages and disadvantages, to identify the strengths and weaknesses and uh, so there is no uh, you know, perfect solution to designing operating systems or to designing software systems in, in general. And as we will see when we get to the different uh, design uh, methods or structures of operating systems, uh, one operating system may use multiple approaches because operating systems evolve over time so uh, in the earlier versions of an operating system the designers may use a certain design approach or philosophy then they will realize that they will have to change it or to use or maybe combine it with other design approaches why because it's not working well and because it's maybe there are some new hardware features that the system will have to handle uh, uh, correctly, you know, li properly, like a uh, you know, multi-core system, for example. If you design your operating system and it wor it's working fine on a single processor, now when the hardware evolves and the system has multiple cores, your system is, not, is no longer working properly, so you need to extend it or modify it, modify the design such that it works well uh, on the new uh, kind of uh, hardware. Okay, so when, uh, when it comes to designing an operating system, there are two kinds of considerations. There are considerations from user point of view and considerations from developer point of view. So from user point of view, the user wants the system to be convenient, to be uh, fast, to be reliable. That's what the user cares about. While there are considerations from developer point of view that the user doesn't care about, like extensibility, um, you know, flexibility of the system, debugability. You know, obviously, the, the user doesn't care about the debuggability of operating system code, or extensibility, how easy it is to extend an operating system and modify the algorithms of the operating system. All of that, all of these considerations are you know, system goals. They are not user goals, because the user doesn't care about these uh, considerations. In designing operating systems, it's important to distinguish between a policy and a mechanism. <coughs> so the policy is about the what. What do we want to implement? And the mechanism is about the how. So an example, uh, a good example, is the timed interrupt that we have studied in previous lectures. So the timed interrupt itself is a mechanism. It's a mechanism for accomplishing what? What does this mechanism accomplish? Kernel control. What's that? Kernel control. Yeah, kernel control. It allows the kernel to stay in control. And it, it accomplishes time sharing 
time sharing, it allows you know, multiple processes to be uh, making progress uh, concurrently, and it ensures kernel control. The kernel stays in control. So this is what this mechanism accomplishes. Now, when the kernel sets that counter to a given to you know, 10 milliseconds, which is what we call the time quantum, time quantum, or time slice. This time quantum or time slice that the, the system is giving to a certain process, this is a policy. And this policy, in fact, is going to depend on the scheduling algorithm. As we will see when we get to scheduling, uh, how long is this time quantum? This may vary. And in fact, not all processes may get the same time quantum. So some processes may get longer time slices than other processes, depending on the scheduling algorithm. So there are scheduling algorithms that give different the time quantum to different processes depending on the behavior of that process. So deciding how long that time quantum is, that's a policy. While implementing this policy, the mechanism for implementing this policy is the time interrupt, which requires hardware support. Now, the point here is that you want your mechanism that implements a certain policy to be flexible enough to allow you to change the policy. So you don't want it to, uh, to be, you know, to hard code anything or to be very, uh, to be limited. You want it to be as flexible as possible so that uh, you, as an operating system designer, can change the policy. Because policies change and, uh, you know, as we said, um, you know, operating systems evolve and they have to support uh, you know, different hardware and different environments. So that's why flexibility is desirable. Now the implementation of the operating system. Earlier operating systems were written in machine code in assembly, but uh, modern operating systems are written in C and C++. At some time, the operating systems were written in uh, other languages, but I don't know if these systems, I don't think they exist anymore. So the, the systems that we use, you know, like uh, Linux and Windows, for example, they are written in C. So we use Linux, Windows, uh, Mac OS, Android, all of these are written in C. Okay. So the, the operating systems that we use that all of us use every day are written in, in C, mostly written in C. Mostly written in C, which means that the main body, the main body of the operating system is written in C, but some of the system programs, for example, system programs are separate programs that may be written in other languages. And some of the system programs are not as performance critical as the kernel itself. So the kernel is performance critical, so you have to write it in a powerful language. While the system programs are not, some of them are not as performance critical, so you may write them in less powerful programming languages, you know, like scripting languages, for example, Perl and Python. Scripting languages, which are much less powerful, may be used to write the uh, than uh, some of the system programs that are not uh, performance critical. Now, in the operating system itself, in the kernel itself, some certain uh, performance critical sections in a kernel may be written in sometimes in assembly, not in C. So for some performance critical sections, uh, the assembly, basically the code is, is, uh, is handwritten in assembly as opposed to writing that in C and relying on the compiler to translate that into assembly. Now, 
Earlier operating systems were written in machine language. Modern operating systems are written in high-level languages, uh, C and C++. Now the question, why? So we need to understand the advantages of writing an operating system in a, a high-level language. And there are at least three advantages of writing an operating system in a high-level <coughs> language as opposed to writing it in machine code. So let's see if we can identify the three main advantages. You have a higher level of, ab of abstraction when you use a higher level, level language. Okay, so this is, yeah, so this is soft, what I call software engineering. Software engineering advantages, including abstraction, readability, it's more readable. You know, programmer productivity, uh, debugability, debugability, programmer uh, productivity. So basically, writing it, productivity. So writing a, a, a program in a high level language makes the programmer more productive. The programmer can write more code. Uh, reuse, reusability. What's that? Reusability. Yes. So let's say all the software engineering uh, considerations that you can, uh, you know, you can do with a high-level language, but you cannot do with machine code. Now, what are the other reasons for writing a yeah. portability? Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Portability. Portability is, is also very important. Uh, you know, examples are the DOS operating system. The DOS operating system was written in x86 assembly, Intel x86 assembly, which means that this operating system could be run only on Intel processors. That's it. Comparing this with Linux, that is written in C, but can be run on Intel x86, on Spark, and on PowerPC, IBM PowerPC. So these Intel x86, Spark, and PowerPC are totally different architectures, totally different hardware architectures. And you can run the same operating system on these different architectures because it's written in C. And you just compile the operating system for a different, uh, a different machine. So you use a compiler that compiles for Intel, and a compiler that compiles for Spark, and a compiler that compiles for PowerPC. It will generate PowerPC code. Okay. So portability is one important uh, advantage. The third advantage, can you think of a third advantage? Okay, so the third advantage is compiler optimizations. Now, when you write an operating system in, in a high level language, you are relying on the compiler to optimize the code. And sometimes, sometimes compilers do a better job, a better job at optimizing performance, especially for larger programs. But if we are talking about a few lines of code, uh, manual optimization uh, maybe the most uh, you know, will give you the most efficient code. If you try to, to optimize a few lines of code and you are an expert assembly programmer, you will optimize this very well. But what about you know, thousands of lines of code? Tens of thousands of lines of code. Can you as an assembly programmer uh, even if you are an expert assembly programmer, can you, can you beat a compiler at optimizing larger pieces of code? In, in general, no. Because you're, you're the, human, uh, the human brain cannot handle uh, you know, larger pieces of code, while the compiler can optimize this using algorithms. The compiler is a set of algorithms that can optimize the code, while you as a human can optimize a small piece of code. And that's why you know, there is an advantage in, in writing operating systems in uh, high-level language. 